four. Representative Seaton, if I could have a motion. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, amendment number four is not being offered. Okay, amendment number four is not being offered. Uh, and, and Mr. Chairman, I just might say it was covered in the previous amendment. Thank you. Okay, so amendment number four is not being adopted, so I'll move on to amendment number five. Representative Garrett, can I have a motion? Thank you, Mr. Chair. I move amendment number five. Is there an objection? Object for discussion? Yeah. Um, and then um, through, the through the chair, um, I'm going to have to offer a conceptual amendment to this. Um, just uh, the amendment was drafted by Ledge Legal. The goal is to increase the maximum sentence for sexual abuse of a minor in the third degree for a first time uh, felon. Um, I've been informed that on line three, possibly, the section that we're putting this into later on in the bill might be being deleted. So we don't want to adopt this and then have the whole section deleted. Uh, so I would just um, move a conceptual amendment to allow Ledge Legal to make sure what we adopt here doesn't get deleted in a different part of the bill. If that's the conceptual amendment number one. Do, I don't so, think you can do that. What? Object. <laughs> so the motion, there was a motion <laughs> yeah, to right. a conceptual amendment number one. We have an objection. Representative Wilson? Um, it's my understanding we have the drafter online. I think it might. this might be a good part to find out whether or not she can let us know whether this could just be changed or move this to the bottom so it can be changed correctly. I understand we don't want to put something in and then have it deleted, but I'm not sure that we can um, by process just have them fix this one and pass it out without knowing what the fix is. Didn't sound like it might be a big deal. So can we ask the drafter if there's a way that this can, be, that C can be to B or maybe somebody has their hand up. Okay, uh, let's take a brief at ease. I think I get Yeah. Eddie's. Minutes back on record at 10:21 a.m. and um, Representative Garrett. Uh, uh, Thank you, through the chair. Um, I remove the conceptual amendment. Um, there is normally and will be um, a statement at the end that we give Ledge Legal the authority to. Uh, write conforming language in case any of the language that has been offered here is mistaken and I would just flag that there is some concern that this section C might be deleted in another part of the bill and for them to just make sure that if we adopt amendment number five it remains in the bill and not be deleted. Thank you. So conceptual amendment number one uh, will not be offered. Uh, offered. And so Rep uh, Representative Garrett, if you could uh, explain amendment number five. Thank you. Amendment number five increases uh, the jail sentence for a first-time uh, felon who commits sexual abuse of a minor in the third degree. That's a C felony. Uh, under the bill as it's written right now, the jail sentence would be zero to one year. But that's also the same exact jail sentence for the misdemeanor lower level of uh, sexual abuse of a minor in the fourth degree, zero to one year. Um, and then sexual abuse of a minor, the, the B felony is zero to two years. Uh, just for consistency, you shouldn't have a felony that's the same exact sentence as the misdemeanor. But um, the reason, all, substantively, I'd like to give the court a broader range of sentences is there's a broad range of conduct that fits in sexual abuse of a minor in the third degree. Uh, that is, sexual abuse of a minor in the third degree is touching somebody in a private part. Uh, you might be having a relationship with a person it's, it's, that's an inappropriate. So. There's a four-year age difference between the two people, at least. So it could be an 18 and a 14-year-old. It could be a 40-year-old and a 14-year-old. It's the same crime. So uh, you would probably get, uh, this says it, the sentence should be zero to 18 months to give the judge a little more discretion. I think if uh, you're touching somebody in a private part, uh, you're in an inappropriate relationship as an 18-year-old and a 14-year-old. That's, uh, that's a crime, but a lesser crime than if you're 40 years old doing the same thing to a 14-year-old. Um, and the crime would apply whether or not 
you have clothes on or not clothes on. So the more extreme versions of the crime should be a longer sentence. This amendment would give the judge the ability, uh, even if it's a first time offense, to go from zero to 18 months, lower for the less egregious portions of the crime, higher for the more egregious portions of the crime. And just as we heard in testimony before, if any of the aggravators apply, if you commit physical violence towards the victim, if you use a weapon, then you're in aggravator land and that, that could be up to five years. But um, this, is, this just moves the first time without an aggravator to zero to 18 months instead of zero to 12 months. Thank you, Representative Guerra. Do we have any questions of the committee? <coughs> Seeing no questions, uh, Representative Wilson, do you maintain your objection? No, I remove my objection. The objection has been removed. Are there any further objections? See no further objections. Amendment number five, which is 30-LS0461 backslash T.10 is adopted. Uh, and so I would also like to note that we were joined earlier by Representative Josephson. Thanks for being here. So let's move on to amendment number six. Um, Representative Pruitt, can I have a motion? Um, I uh, move amendment number six. Okay. And is there objection? Objection. Object uh, and Representative Pruitt, would you like to explain your amendment? Yeah, thank you. Um, the goal here uh, is there is there has been concern that uh, the loudest conversation that we've had out there has been related to thefts. Have been related to especially what we someone call the the nonviolent, the petty, whatever you want to call it, thefts. Um, And for the most part, most of it has been contributed to the opioid crisis. So if the issue is that there are um, people that need help, uh, they have had some opioid challenges, we figured that it might be important to try to get them into treatment. As the law current, as the as the bill currently is, is written, when it relates to, and we, we dealt earlier with fixing a few aspects of, of the thresholds on threat theft. If you read those, it specifically may, it, it talks about for your first theft, um, you have one punishment. For a second theft, it's a, it only deals with previous instances of theft. It does not deal with previous instances of any sort of other crime. What, we what I chose not to do is I did not apply this to every other crime. But if it's your first theft and you previously have been convicted of a drug conviction and it's only drug convictions, then what you'll do is instead of that first theft starting off at that very first place where it's a violation or you have five days suspended, we are basically going to start you off at that second instance of theft, which is... Uh, five days of active imprisonment. Um, and that really, although there's a paragraph here, the only change is that instead of being five days suspended, which is what the first instance of theft would be, it would be five days of active. It allows us to get people that have those uh, previous convictions for drug abuse into the system, get, allows us that opportunity to try to take advantage of trying to, to deal with them. So that is what this, that is, uh, that's what the change here is. Thank you, Representative Pruitt. Do we have any questions of the committee? Yeah. Representative Seaton. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I guess I'm trying to uh, figure out whether this um, corresponds with the um, Commission's mandate to try to stop recidivism. If we have somebody with first-time theft, and we put him in jail for five days with hardened criminals, et cetera. Um, I believe that the data sh says that that's not going to re reduce recidivism. In fact, it's going to probably encourage more of, of the bad behavior. So I'm trying to figure out how relating this to a drug, um, a previous, that's at any, any time previous drug offense would get to the point of reducing recidivism um, and, and how that would work. Representative Pruitt? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, obvious, obviously, if they've had a previous drug offense, um, I, I would say what we did the first time probably didn't work because they're continuing to um, 
they're continuing to offend, they're just offending in a different manner. In this particular case, they are probably, most likely, they're farther along in the process of their, um, uh, of their addiction because they've moved to the point where they've started to steal from people at this point in time, which is usually, uh, for, for at least, there are different instances, but in terms of conversations I've had with police officers, um, when you start to get to the theft portion, it's because you've probably, at that point, you've lost your job, you've, um, uh, you're, you, you probably have a, a very large addiction. Uh, there are some addictions uh, where you could be at $100,000 a year just to pay for your, your addiction. And so obviously it didn't work the first time. We put them in prison or, or we, uh, they were arrested in some capacity, but they've continued uh, getting them into the system. And, I, 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 and I, I hear the putting them into prison. I would just like to remind everybody that it, we have used the putting into prison makes harder criminals as an escape to, to f try to, to make sure that we understand that there's obviously a problem with our correction system if our go-to is that people become worse when they get placed in. But that being said, obviously it hasn't worked, and so we need to, we need to get them back into the system and try to address their concerns uh, or, or their issues if they have previously been found in a position where they are... Um, uh, where they were already arrested for drug offenses. Now, uh, one little side note on that is, the goal here is to balance. Um, you notice I just did it with drug offenses. The public is demanding, and, we, and you heard it on the, on the phone calls, uh, they're really demanding that we repeal the whole thing. And I'm trying to, I'm trying to meet in the middle of the, the repeal discussion and addressing the concerns that the public have. And, and it's a valid concern. They are, they are, people are breaking into their stuff. And dealing with the other side of things, which is the opioid crisis that we all recognize is happening. And I'm trying to, uh, it was, the goal was to try to find that middle ground and try to address the public's concerns at the same time, try to make sure that we're, we're um, uh, not going, rolling back uh, fully uh, some of the uh, items that the commission wanted and that we previously had passed under 91. Thank you, Representative Pruitt. Um, I'd like to also recognize that we're joined by uh, Representative Clayman in the audience. Thanks for being here. Uh, we've got a question from Representative Guerra and then Ortiz. Representative Guerra. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, first, a question for the sponsor and then a comment. Um, so a prior drug offense um, before marijuana was made legal, legal would have been possessing marijuana in a certain amount. Uh, so would this result in jail time for somebody who had personal marijuana, um, and um, which is now legal, um, and required jail time for that? These are B misdemeanors, so these are theft of less than $250, so mostly shoplifting and that sort. But is this, does this include prior marijuana use convictions? Representative Pruitt. Um, you might need to, uh, and you're, you're talking about people that were convicted prior to the, the new law passing. Um, I'd actually probably have to take a moment and, and make sure that I could answer that correctly. Okay. <laughs> Representative Gear. Um, yeah, I don't know if we'll need a break, but let me, um, I still oppose the amendment. Um, uh, the marijuana issue is one issue, but just to make clear to people, the, there is a problem right now with repeat theft. Somebody can continue to shoplift, get convicted, shoplift again, get convicted, and there will be no jail time. And I think most, if not uh, most members of this legislature, maybe all members of this legislature, think 